Alright guys, long time no see. I've uh, been gone for a while, but I'm back, and it's time to frame. And you're wondering, I'm not on a job site, so how are we going to frame? We're going to frame by doing some good old model making. I always love building models, and I built this one six months ago. This is a 1012 gable end with a 1012 hip return on it. I got my gable wall, my rafter. So basically I'm going to do something very similar today. I'm going to have a wall that, you know, the bird's mouth, all the rafters are going to sit on. I want to just practice my hips, my just my overhangs, my rafters, my fascia heights, how all this stuff works and comes together and it was just super beneficial to me and I always wanted to do more. So that's what we're going to do today. I just got to find out what I'm going to do with this thing and then we'll get rolling. Alright, this is what I'm working with today. It's my scrap pile. I went dumpster diving earlier today, and believe it or not, this is what I came up with. Besides that 4x8 sheet, that I bought. But all this, now I'm going to build something out of it. So I'm going to be framing just a little bump out roof, uh, about six foot long. It's going to have two hips on the end. And later, I'm going to, like after I have it all framed and I'm happy with everything, I'm going to cut uh, a bell into each rafter and I'm going to make it a bell roof because I've always wanted to do one of those and why not do it now? I'm going to go through all of this with you guys so that you guys can learn with me. I don't know how this is going to go. I can either be an idiot or I could be a genius. I have no idea. I got a new toy too. We're going to test this thing out today, give it its first leg. So I got about 30 inches to work with. 30 inches, but I kind of want to go a little less just because. Alright, so I'm going to figure all of this out using the uh, Construction Master Pro app. So this is what I'm going to just kind of mess with some numbers here and just see what it gives me in, in terms of rise and stuff and pitch. So if we do a 6 inch overhang, that brings me to uh, 1 foot 6. So we go 1 foot 6. That's our run. And now we go 10 inch pitch, and that puts my rise at one foot three. So we'll just write all this stuff down. We'll go our run is one foot six. We'll go our uh, rise is one foot three. And that puts our diagonal at one foot 11 and seven sixteenths. Since I'm doing hips on both ends, uh, that's going to bring my run one foot six in from each from each way. I want there to be some sort of ridge, and then the hips. So what? That's that's three foot right there. I could just do three foot again, like three foot in the center. So that would make it six foot. I'm going to take all of this one apart because this one's going to be huge, and it's going to annoy people. It's going to annoy people how big this thing is. So, we're going to have this overall wall that I'm going to build right now. And that's going to be 7 foot. Okay? And now I'm going to have 3 inches of wall on each side. And then we're going to have 6 inches back. So, you know, you have your, your facial line. So this is going to be your facial line. And now 6 inches back is going to be your wall line. Okay, and that's going to come out one foot six. So this is going to be my wall. And then this is going to be our roof line. So that should give us enough because this dimension is still, is it six foot? No, it's not. It's five foot six. So you know what? Let's uh, let's lay out a rafter, and then we can figure out my fascia height and what height this wall needs to be. We're gonna do our tail. And we're gonna figure out this wall height, and we're just gonna add that to that one foot six, and that'll give us our uh, that'll give us this wall height right there. All right, we have our piece of two by eight. 
I'm going to do everything out of 2x8 just because I found a lot of it, so why not? Got my big 12. Now you can also use a framing square, but for this I'm going to use this big 12. My diagonal is 1 foot 11 and 7 sixteenths. Where's my pencil? So we're going to just write that on here just so we don't forget about it. 1 foot 11 and 7 sixteenths. That's my raptor length. Now it's a 10 pitch, so we're gonna make this we're gonna make this our ridge cut. We're gonna go right to where it says 10. I want that to be perfect. And I'm gonna cut this before I measure it. Now I'm gonna pull down one foot eleven and seven sixteenths and I'll make a mark. So one foot eleven. 7 sixteenths. So that is going to be my where my wall is. So where my plywood is. So you just put another plumb cut right on this. So that's my plumb cut. See cut. We're just going to go at a 50. So see I'm at a 50 degree. That's the reverse of a 10. A 10 is a 40 degree. So we'll put that at a 50. We'll go over until it hits three and a half on my square and make our mark. That's going to be our bird's mouth. Now that makes my seat height six and five sixteenths. Some people call it a height above plate, a hap. Uh, people call it the heel. This is where it confuses, it confused me when I was young. I didn't know where you were taking your measurements from but you have to look at it like a rectangle. I know it's weird, but picture this as a rectangle. So these lines are parallel. So no matter how far up you go here, it's always gonna be the same here because they match. So that's why I was like, how are you figuring out your ridge height when you're coming up off the wall that amount? Our rise is one foot three. Our rise is not gonna be one foot three. Our rise is gonna be one foot nine and seven sixteenths. Oh no wait, five sixteenths, sorry. I'm adding that six and five sixteenths to that one foot three. So now we're gonna work on the tail and now I want a six inch overhang so I'm not gonna pull over six inches here. I'm kinda making this confusing to you guys but I'm really not. I'm just, I don't wanna use this end of the tape so I'm just burning six and I was just gonna mark 12 but you don't wanna do that. You wanna mark inch and a half less than 12 so for your fascia. I'm going to make another plumb cut at that mark. And now this is where I want to figure out my uh, where you need to cut this. Now you could cut it, what we do on the job site is we just mark five and a quarter just to play it safe and you square over. That's just for your soffit because we do a lot of metal soffit in our area. So it's just out of the way of the soffit guys. They can just run their soffit and it's not hanging below the fascia at all. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to go one step further. So here's my center of my fascia. Okay. Center of my fascia is three quarters. I'm going to put it on here. On the line. Until my center meets that board. And once that center meets that board, that's my fascia height. So that's where I need to square this off and cut it. Put our square on there. And if you haven't noticed, this all makes 90 degree angles. So this is the tail. This is my bird's mouth. I got my ridge cut already. Let's cut this and then that's our pattern. But that's your rafter. And now I could honestly, I could figure out this, this wall height. So that's three and a half. Cool. Alright, it's time to start framing the wall. So I'm probably going to time lapse a lot of this, but it is what it is. So I need uh, two plates at seven foot. So my new rise is one foot nine and five sixteenths. That's my new rise. And I also have to add three and a half for that wall. No, I actually have to add another three inches too. What am I doing? So this is two foot, this becomes two foot, five sixteenths. 
So two foot three and 13 sixteenths is this wall height. Minus three, so that's two foot 13 sixteenths. So that's what I need uh, two boards at, and then we can finish framing this wall. First thing I need to do is I need to find center. And then we know that our wall is five foot six. So we're gonna go 33 each way. Mark that. Mark five foot six. Alright, so as you can see, I got all my walls framed. So, this, like I said, is the wall that the rafters are going to sit on. So this would represent that little bump out wall on the house. All that's left is to finally frame the roof. First thing we have to do is we can figure out our ridge length pretty easily. I know that I'm going one foot six each way in because I have hips on both of these corners and they're the same pitch. So that means whatever I come out here, one foot six, which is my run, I have to come over here. So that's three foot, one foot six on both sides. That's three foot. My overall is five foot seven. I put a half inch on both sides, so I made it five foot seven, not five foot six. It doesn't really matter, it only affects the ridge number. So five foot seven minus three foot, so that's two foot seven. My ridge is two foot seven. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a two foot seven ridge and then uh, I can snap my, well actually we can snap our line on here right now. So our rise, it is one foot three plus my seat height, one foot nine and five sixteenths. So one foot nine and five sixteenths. Tack a little nail. Snap that line. So let me go cut this ridge and we'll install it. And then I'll cut um, some more rafters and we'll put some rafters against the wall and we'll put some rafters on this wall. All right, well, I made my, uh, my first mistake. Uh, I feel like some of you might have caught it when I was doing it, but when I was laying out that rafter, I forgot to account for my ridge, which all you have to do is subtract for your ridge from your run. So my run was, so my run was one foot six. So instead I'll go one foot four and a half as my run. And then I'll go do the same rise. And then my diagonal is different. Now my diagonal is one foot 10 and five sixteenths. That doesn't mess with anything that I've already done. It just messes with my rafter pattern which thankfully I have not cut any of my rafters yet. I noticed it before I did, which is a good thing. But say you're on a big roof and you cut your whole roof, yeah, that's a big problem. So I'm gonna go just recut this rafter. All I'm literally gonna do is remeasure it from the tail because that's a lot easier to just make one plumb cut on your ridge than it is to recut the tail. All right, so quick series of events. Me messing up that ridge and my run number kind of messed up my diagonal too. I learned something. That's what I did. So now like all the calculations are different. I have to drop this ridge and I have to recut my rafter. Um, so basically what it did was it made the pitch not a 10 and I went to check the rafter and it was way, way off. So what I was doing before, I was doing the one, the one foot four and a half, right? That's my run. And then I was just going to my rise uh, one foot three. 
but my rise isn't one foot three anymore, it's going to be different. So instead I have to go with a 10 inch pitch and then my rise. Now my rise is one foot one and three quarter. And then now my diagonal is one foot nine and a half. So I have to cut this rafter again for the third time and uh, drop that to one foot one and three quarter plus my seat. Now let's try it. Golly, man. So with all of that mumbo jumbo fixed, that's my rafter. Looks real good there, nice and tight. Beautiful there. So that's kind of what you want to see. Everything nice and tight, right to that ridge. You see, see my old mark, and then this is my new mark. And now everything worked out perfectly, right on a 10 pitch. So that's kind of what I'm going for right now, is I'll have that rafter there, that rafter there, the rafters in the middle, and then the hips coming down. All that's left is to frame the hips and I'm going to do it a little differently than uh, how we normally frame hips on a job site. What we do is we usually just drop the hip and that's what most people do too just because it's easier. And What I mean by dropping the hip is we cut uh, a little bit out, normally it's about 3 eighths, 3 eighths out of the bottom seat cut that sits on the wall and that drops the hip enough so that the edges of the hip playing with the rest of the roof and your jacks all playing together to the center of the hip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some uh, I'm going to do some hip bevel backing. So I'm going to find out my backing angle and I'm going to bevel the hips so everything looks really nice. I'll show you guys how to do that. I'm actually going to kind of learn how to do it too because I don't know how to get that angle. At first I thought they would just be 45s. I was completely wrong. I tried it out and it's no. I'm going to cut some uh, some little models and I'll show you the different types of hips that I'm talking about. I'll show you one uh, that I drop and how that kind of works, uh, how to cut that, how to cut a cheat cut and everything. A lot of the stuff a lot of you guys should already know, but it's fun to just go through, you know. And then I'm going to map it, everything out on a sheet of plywood to get my hip number and cut my hip. I'm not going to measure anything on this. I got four different types of uh, hip cheek cut just to show you so if you have this up here everything needs a plane you know to your rafters to your ridge everything if you if you do that right you plane that center to everything so that everything's gonna plane to the center you're you're high so you drop that down so all you do is you just drop that down until the edges meet your rafters whatever this number is yeah, about three-eighths. You take it out of your seat cut, like right here. So you take three-eighths out so that it drops your hip. That's not what we're gonna do today. I wanna go one step further and bevel my, bevel my hips. Now, what I first did was I tried just 45-ing it, and then I went to check it, and see how low I am here? So what did I do wrong? So, you know, give it a little Google. Uh, it's not gonna be a 45. It's gonna be a weird number. It's going to be a 26.92 is your hit backing bevels. All right, so here we are. We got our piece of plywood here. This is the first time I'm, I'm, uh, I've done this, so bear with me, please. But uh, I'm gonna figure out my hip. So, like I was saying earlier, it's just a 2D image extruded, and that's what makes it confusing to people. So, all it is is a square. So, I know that my run each way is one foot four and a half. So, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark one foot four and a half. And I'll mark it over here too one foot four and a half. Alright, guys, so basically, I did all of this completely wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fast forward through all of this because none of it really matters at this point. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys me beveling the hips and laying the hip out 
at the wrong number and then I'll explain later what I did and how I messed it up. Time to lay out our hip rafter. So what I've done is on this 2x10, I've already cut my backing bevel on it. So all I need to do is make my top cheek cut and then we can measure from there. So all I do is go over to your hip and valley, your 10, 12 hip and valley. I'm gonna make this one mark. Just find yourself a piece of scrap from the same stock that you're cutting with, which is just dimensional inch and a half. Get your inch and a half and then you could just make this other mark. So these angles right here are 45s to make that 90. It's always confusing to, to, to new guys. It was confusing to me at first, but uh, my foreman pointed out something really smart. Which line do you cut first? Well, if you cut this line first, you know you did something wrong because this line disappeared. <laughs> so you always cut this line first, uh, beveled back, angled back this way, and then you cut this line that's left over. Pretty simple, but still it confused me at first too. And come back the other way. All right, so now all we need to do is measure from this point our two measurements. So I have three foot one and that's to my wall. And then I have three foot nine and three eighths. So we'll go three foot one. and three foot nine and three eighths. So yeah, I just have to line that up with the very tip. And that's my, that's where I cut that bird's mouth at. So that those points meet, not here. So this is not the line, it's right here. Okay, so there's that. Now I just need to come down my seat height. Now, I'll explain this guy, this to you. So I got six and five sixteenths, and that's from outside of plywood. Everything has to be six and five sixteenths up. And now, remember, I took my measurement from the outside corner, the outside of plywood. So from that, I should have six. I need six and five sixteenths, and everything will work out if I do just that. Just do the reverse right there, and that's my bird's mouth. And now it's time to lay out our tail. And now our tail is gonna be different. Our tail, I wanna bevel at a 45 each way. So that, so I want this to be my outside, you know, my center. So that means I just need to mark 45 back each way. Just like that and then I can do my hip cut, okay? And now my fascia height, I have to remember. Is six and a sixteenth. All right, so that's my hip rafter. All right. You guys want to figure it out and see if it fits? It looks long. I'll tell you that right now. It looks long. Yeah, it's long. Okay, so I did that completely wrong. Completely wrong. That's what I did. Yeah, so we'll just go one foot, one, three, quarter. This is our rise. Go 10 inch pitch. Our run, one foot four and a half, and then we'll just choose hip and valley, and that's our hip and valley length. It's that easy. I didn't need to do any of this. You win some, you lose some. And it's completely wrong, too. I took that run instead of this run. It, it's really just this run, which is one foot four and a half. I don't know why I did that run. So let's uh, recut this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from here over and recut my cheek cut, my top cheek cut. I just hope it fits. String a line from these tails. 
Well, my tail looks beautiful. See that? That's why that those backing bevels are beautiful. Look at that, dude. I don't know if you can see that, but that's that's what you want right there. Four points of contact. If I plumb that up, I should have. Six and five sixteenths. Look at that. All right, so that's my seat height from there. So that matches everything. So that's why that planes. So everything worked out. This didn't turn out tight though. That's what's confusing me. If anyone knows why, leave that down in the comments. I, I'm not sure, but everything worked out. My tail was right. This is right now. Maybe it has something to do with this this backing bevel that's just messing me up. All right, guys. So uh, I have this roof all framed up besides the fascia. I got my hips in. Everything planes very nicely with this hip all the way down. Four points of contact on my tails, too. Nice and tight here, tight, tight. I'll go ahead and put my fascia on, and once I get my fascia on, uh, you can see how everything kind of planes to the center of the fascia, and hopefully uh, the bottom of my soffit cut is gonna be right on or just a little bit shorter. Fascia is on. Show you guys how everything planes together. Everything planes to the center, which works out really nice. See that? Nice and flush there. Also, by the way, this is where I uh, test out the nail guns that I have to fix. Well, we would be ready for sheets. Instead, I want to take it a step further and I want to frame a bell into these rafters so i'll show you guys how i'm gonna do that it's should be fairly simple but then again i've never done it before i kind of learned it from ontario framing he's on instagram saw one of his instagram uh, videos about it so that's basically what i'm gonna do is he kind of just traced his own and went from there but i'm gonna go from my ridge all the way down to i'm gonna keep it up just a tiny bit so that the plywood kind of plane to that center. So we'll go from right there. All right, so I just took everything apart. So from that mark to this, I'm just gonna do a gradual curve. So we're just gonna draw this out as best as I can. Just a gradual swoop, just like that. So that's our bell rafter. Not the cleanest cut right there. All right, so we're just gonna use this. We'll trace the other ones. All right, so now I have all my bell rafters in and I reinstalled my hips and now you're wondering how am I gonna get the bell on the hips and it's actually pretty pretty easy or at least uh, he made it easy on the video so I'm just gonna try it I'm not gonna mess with the bevels because uh, yeah that would be some some high skill uh, woodworking right there but how I'm gonna get that is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm gonna tape it to where it lines up right with the bottom of the level. And I'm gonna run it down the hips. Is go right down these rafters with it. 
All right, so there she is. It's a bell roof all framed up. Uh, it looks rough, trust me it does. Even my hips look a little low on the, on the fascia, but I think everything will float out with the plywood and everything. Um, first time I, I've done this, I just wanted to do it. Uh, so now I, I know a little bit better for next time if I ever do one. The only thing left I have to do is to uh, sheet this thing. So that's what we're gonna do now. I got this quarter inch plywood that'll bend really easily. Cut it, bend it. I'm actually gonna leave the hip long and I'm just gonna trace it up here because it's kind of like a weird, it'll be a weird little angle. So my plywood, an inch and a half less than this total number. So 79 and an eighth. I'm gonna be three quarters in on each side of the fascia. So cutting it an inch and a half less. We'll bend the tape with the rafter. Got about 29 and a quarter. All right, I got this sheet up here. Like I said, it's cut long. I'm gonna screw it down. See how I can push that down? Push this down really easily. I'm gonna screw it down and then I'm gonna trace this hip. But this turned out really nice. Really nice bell roof. See the bell in it? You can see that. So that concludes the first episode of this new series, Learn to Frame, where I basically just take little framing details, little roofs, anything you can possibly think of that you want to learn on, that I want to learn on, uh, and I build scale models of them in my little tiny little garage which if I keep doing this, I'm really gonna have to find a place to put these. Let me know what I should do with them. Should I like take a chainsaw to them? Should I, I don't know, blow them up? Probably get dynamite somewhere. I messed up a few things, had a few mistakes, but um, I learned from them and that's the whole point of this. You, you see where you messed up and you try to figure it out. You try to figure out where you went wrong. You try other things. All of this was built from stuff that I found in the dumpster except for this uh, quarter inch sheet. But, so that's kind of crazy to me. With all these lumber prices soaring, it's kind of a good thing that I was able to find all this in the dumpster, but also kind of like worrying, like, why are all these framers throwing all this stuff away? I don't know, I'm not complaining. And I do have a new uh, video in the works on the house that we're currently on. It's not one of our customs, but it's for another builder. I'm gonna kind of film a similar video to my first video, just big time lapse of the whole house. And I'm gonna be filming a kind of sit down video explaining what to expect and tips and tricks on being a new guy on a framing crew. And I've gotten a lot of questions in my comments about it, about how to get into the trade and, and how they can learn and what to expect. So, uh, and I am gonna have our new, our new labor, Jack, uh, talk on the video as well. He's been with us for maybe close to a month 18 straight out of high school. So he's gonna have some great insight for you guys. So yeah, be on the lookout for that one too. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.